Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Let me say morning to my colleagues in this August chamber and to viewers and listening, listeners to the proceedings here this morning. Mr. Speaker, it is with a feeling of exuberance and enthusiasm in extremely high spirits, I rise to unequivocally support the Appropriation Bill 2024-2025. When I listened to the Prime Minister, quite attentively I confess, the articulation and the narration, what immediately sprang to mind was the old colloquial saying, Pilowani pli passe mashna. Yes, indeed, Mr. Speaker, for I never contemplated with every degree of reasonableness that I could conceivably muster from within that this budget, ad budget address would have contained all these pronouncements geared at making life better for each and every St. Lucian, irrespective of your race, color, class, or creed, and even more significantly, one's political affiliation. As I listened and found my memory bank running out of storage space as it relates to the benefits to our people when they were enumerated, what I quickly remembered, Mr. Speaker, was this government's gesture not too long ago, not too long after assuming office, rather, to pay the Liat and Majestic workers. For such a deed never took cognizance of any political consideration, but was a, more, a move at the very least to compensate those persons who had given years and years of service to these establishments without receiving the just desserts. And you know, Mr. Speaker, when you juxtapose that kind of deed to the many pronouncements beneficial to the people of this country, which I will come to later. Without the qualification for entitlement being you must be a party supporter, this truly reflects a manifestation of the maxim putting people first. But sadly, Mr. Speaker, when a former occupier of the prime ministerial chair will overtly criticize the benefits that this government is bestowing on the people of this country, it is a sad day in our politics. Very sad, Mr. Speaker, for all he sees is once again to become Prime Minister of this beautiful 238 square mile rock of ours. And so, Mr. Speaker, as though it was not enough to keep your unjustified criticism at home, you traverse our jurisdictional boundaries find yourself on foreign soil to bad talk St. Lucia in the hopes that you can garner regional and international support to find yourself Prime Minister of this country again. Mr. Speaker, that eventuality is quite a remote one. When you tell me, Mr. Speaker, that for the police to have received any equipment or any amenities that would lead to a more comfortable working environment. Your spouse had to hold balls. Yes, your spouse had to hold balls to equip the police. Funds were risen for that purpose. This, Mr. Speaker, is rather disheartening. Lau dimele set le sien, daruni o pumye menis, pou baise polis la sa yo buizen, pou yo tuavay kofotabma, Madame Uni Puche de Balls, Minis Nipu I I I Fes I got create um um model we yon Latin Saki long shive sakite ho yo te ka model pour raise la job by police, Mr. Speaker. Gouvernement sa pakosa. That cannot be the policy direction that any government should be proud of, Mr. Speaker. You see. They will be quick to go overseas and tarnish St. Lucia's name and say we are infested with crime. You and I know, Mr. Speaker, that no one in this country would be happy with crime. 
one murder, if you ask me, is already too many. And that's why this government is making all relevant resources available to the police. This government has had, held no balls or asked any minister to model to raise funds for the police. As a matter of policy, the law enforcement, law enforcement should be a national priority. The police should not be treated in that manner. This government has reinstated the police training vote, something that was stopped by the last administration. The last government, for reasons known only to themselves but unjustified in the eyes of reasonable man, demolished Central Police Station. But guess what? Having done that, they rented premises on Bridge Street. Can you imagine having Central Police Station on Bridge Street? In my humble view, this is not a location suited for a police station, let alone Central Police Station. The logistical necessities for a police station, Mr. Speaker, are all absent in that location. And the unit, I dare say, is no bigger than a retail outlet for cell phones. Why did the last government continue to treat the police that, quick, that way? The headquarters, the home of the police ban, was demolished, Mr. Speaker. And I don't mind demolition. You demolish when you are prepared to replace or rebuild. But they demolish Central Police Station and they were totally unprepared to commence construction of any other. The traffic department was at police headquarters, which they demolished. And you further compromised the police, Mr. Speaker, by demolishing the headquarters and renting premises from your father to house the traffic department, Mr. Speaker. That is the kind of scantry guard with which the police were treated. Custody suites were demolished. Custody suites without any reason. And today, Mr. Speaker, they are the very ones who had done all in their powers to ensure that the police are not properly equipped with the relevant necessities to combat crime. But they are the very ones who have everything negative to say about an assiduous effort, Mr. Speaker, by this government to right the wrong. Even Coco, Mr. Speaker, from his vantage point in very close proximity to our maker, God bless his soul, can see what this government is doing in relation to national security. This government has reinstated the police training vote. The most vehicles in less than three years. More vehicles in less than three years than the entire five of the former uh, last administration. Custody suites is almost completed, Mr. Speaker. The Northern Divisional Headquarters is proceeding with alacrity, Mr. Speaker. But no, they will do well by tarnishing St. Lucia's name without giving an iota of a clue as to what this government is doing in relation to law enforcement. You see, Mr. Speaker, they find fault with everything. Friday gone, Mr. Speaker, the sword turning ceremony that would mark the commencement of the construction for such needed Hall of Justice was held. And you should hear what the naysayers had to say, Mr. Speaker. You should hear what they cited as being problematic, looking for the slightest tool within the crevices of what is obviously a beneficial project to this country and the judiciary, they looked and looked for things they believe they can cite as being problematic. What amazes me, Mr. Speaker, listen to the rationale. A courthouse is currently located where the Hall of Justice will be built. In fact, the courthouse is still there. You have no complaints today. But because the Hall of Justice was announced, you hear about packing problems. You hear about how will you take the prisoners there. 
Those were questions they needed to have asked given the current location of the very courthouse that is located in the same area. Ask them about parking for the, for the current location. Ask them how prisoners get there. And so, Mr. Speaker, those guys are so anti-progressive. Once the progress don't come at their hands, that they will say anything to confuse the minds of reasonable men and women who obviously can see that the government is doing well, Mr. Speaker. All sorts of foolish concerns all sorts you would swear the place never had a courthouse before but you see mr speaker what they would prefer us to do is to rent rather than build let's keep on renting mr speaker the judiciary is spread all over the length and breadth of cast trees courthouses at point seraphine can you imagine a duty-free shopping center all over the place but no they have a problem with a centralized location. Mr. Speaker, talking about renting, let me say something about rental expenses. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Hall of Justice has been built on an agreed sum of $143 million. This has been done through a built agreement. Build, operate, lease, and transfer. And once the government pays its lease quarterly, at the end of the agreed period, the asset is transferred to the government for one dollar. We don't have to borrow any money to get the Hall of Justice constructed. We are getting it fully done, fully constructed, Mr. Speaker, and eventual transfer for one dollar, Mr. Speaker. You see, Mr. Speaker, it is that kind of vision that the former government lacked. They found the same arrangement with Uranora International Airport. What did they do? They mash it up. They paid a penalty for breach of contract for almost $3 million, Mr. Speaker. And on top of that, go and borrow half a billion dollars to put debt on this country to get the airport going, Mr. Speaker. And guess what? The biggest project in the history of this country funded by us was by way of direct award mr speaker a project that had no bill of quantities no bill of quantities that is how it was mr speaker I fess out lay, a demon south fair, nukai gaden, ukai meo pusale, nukai peo. When you are not dealing with your money and you don't have the interests of the country at heart, those are the kind of egregious decisions that you make or take, Mr. Speaker. They would prefer renting than having our own. Mr. Speaker, for the financial year 2016, and I had to go down in the books to find it, for the financial year 2016 2017, our rental expense per annum was in the 30s. 30 something million a year when they released it mr speaker it was nearing 70 million 68 million to be exact the former administration in one term in one term doubled our yearly rental expenses and you're telling me when you double it send almost 70 million dollars you know and guess what mr speaker that amount did not even take cognizance of the dire mall which gov which this government has to honor at over a million dollars a month mr speaker so when you take it to govern massa la se chwe yo de gai chwe set li sien la yo a twe nou te ka pay about 20 a check million dollar par l'année la yo la j Yo la J a 68 million. Yo pues double ek alesa yo kito bilbanu pou da hebol aho yo million dollar pa moi pou 16 la de edimi. And by the time we finish pay, the rent on da hebol 
we would have paid a total of almost $200 million a month, Mr. Speaker. And what is even more disheartening is that as they were doubling our rental expenses uh, for the year, they were busy patronizing their families, renting five offices from the father of the prime minister in the process, Mr. Speaker. You know, including the traffic department. You know, and then you ask them about conflict of interest. Mr. Speaker, in my humble view, this far surpasses what the periphery of conflict of interest would entertain. And it encroaches on the borders of corruption, Mr. Speaker. That is my view. It borders, it, it borders on the periphery of corruption, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, between Ministry of Home Affairs and Ministry of Justice and the Public Service, government spends about $27 million a year in rental. 27 million of the over 70 million which the rental bill now stands at. So if we do the maths correctly, Mr. Speaker, we are paying 70 million dollars a year in rent. Hear this well, Mr. Speaker. We got a building to be built on a bolt agreement for 143 million dollars. It means, Mr. Speaker, if we take all our rental payments for two years, we can knock off the bill related to the halls of justice, Mr. Speaker. Totally knock it off. But guess what? The halls of justice would save this government some $27 million a month. So it makes every sense, every sense Mr. Speaker, to have undergone with that agreement, to have gone with that agreement, to ensure that the asset is ours and we are saving some $27 million a month, which would have gone to rental for the various uh, 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 agencies, Mr. Speaker, that would utilize the Hall of Justice, Mr. Speaker. So, my view is, Mr. Speaker, let, let's examine the pros, the pros and cons of moving in that direction. And you know, it is that kind of never-ending commitment to pay rent in perpetuity that provided the NHC under my watch to move in the direction of property ownership. From 1956, Mr. Speaker, from 1956, the NHC Act was formed in 1957, but from 1956, 58 years, the National Housing Corporation had been renting premises, Mr. Speaker, had been renting spaces all over the place, left, right, and center, moving from one office to another. This has stopped with the acquisition of their own office. But not before, Mr. Speaker, we were embarrassed by the opposition. We were embarrassed by the leader of the opposition and his cohort, Mr. Speaker. All sorts of defamatory accusations were leveled at me, resulting in three court cases. Three court cases, Mr. Speaker. But you know what? The Prime Minister has always told us, keep your eyes on the prize. And we proceeded with alacrity and without being disturbed by the noisemakers, Mr. Speaker. The mission had to be pursued and this humble servant shall not be derailed. Mr. Speaker, we would have heard the Prime Minister made reference to the commencement of a series of housing projects in various localities. Mr. Speaker, at the National Housing Corporation, we have an approved set of drawings with five similar buildings, Mr. Speaker. Each of these buildings will contain 15 two-bedroom condos. Although the price per condo now cannot be fully determined, one thing is certain, Mr. Speaker, in, its, in a gesture at discharging its social responsibility, this government, under the leadership of Philip Joseph Pierre, the Prime Minister, member for Castries East, will not include the price of the land in the eventual sales price of these units, Mr. Speaker. I'm also certain, Mr. Speaker, that persons would have heard 
that the government will facilitate through the St. Lucia Development Bank a 100% loan facility, meaning you do not need a deposit. Premier ministre a fait possible pour servir civil, les Kaila Kuma Sevan, pour aller SLDB, il jamais l'argent là où ça joue non loan 100%. Sans pay pièce calte deposit de pou qualifi. What more can anybody ask for, Mr. Speaker? What more can anybody want from a government? And I can say with every degree of certainty, Mr. Speaker, that this Kazaba development is ready to go. It is ready to go and it will start very, very soon. I do envisage a huge sword turning ceremony pretty soon. You know why we are going to make that sword, sword turning ceremony huge, Mr. Speaker? For the last five, for the five years between 2016 and 2021, the last administration did not build one house. Mr. Speaker, at the government of the Bote of Power between 2016 and 2021, pas même au Kai au Kalosh Pool, you have a reason. So we need, we have come in, we have acquired the lands, we have gone to this year, we have approval, and we are ready to go. That is how a government works in the interest of its people, Mr. Speaker. And so, we will make that sword turning ceremony huge. The feature address will be delivered by the member for Grozy Lee, who's quite excited, Mr. Speaker. Other developments like Rock Hall will be on its heels, Mr. Speaker. Mabuya Valley as well, it's a plan that can be replicated anywhere because it has already received approval. It's a matter of site approval with this year, and we're good to go. Mr. Speaker, this is good news as the government will be in a position to sell the houses at concessionary prices. Why is it such good news? Because the government, with its visionary ability, has added to its investment portfolio under the CIP housing. They have added, we have added housing, Mr. Speaker, so we can sell houses to our people at a concessionary price. That is the vision of the government in putting people first, and it is to the forefront of national policy, Mr. Speaker. But what does the opposition do? They go about spewing loads and loads of misinformation, get at pointing fingers of shady dealings on this government. Shady dealings, you know. Shady dealings, can you imagine the last administration with that last prime minister and that last member for Kasri South Thief? South East, sorry, is casting aspersions of shady dealings on this government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it was the last administration that reduced the CIP qualifying figure from 200,000 to 100,000. They were the ones who do it. And we found it there. And we have not interfered with it, Mr. Speaker. We have not interfered with it. Denier administration, Jouen Bagayla, 200 mil dollars. Souvle vignon citizen, c'est l'ici. Abachas ne mi mampu. Miku South, yo bese pou yo samil. Yo ki bese. Me a chol ma yo ka pale tout kalte brou ha ha. A kodi se gouvernement sa ki fe, Mr. Speaker. We found it like that. We have not interfered with it. Mr. Speaker, pursuant to offers from investors, the government has entered into several contractual arrangements to execute programs such as housing on behalf of the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, all those contractual arrangements 
bind government to accept the hundred thousand dollars which it inherited as consideration personally mr speaker i have no difficulty with the government taking a joint position on many issues but the question is how can you enter into a joint agreement which in a nutshell is asking you to raise the cost of participation in the program when you have contractual obligations which if you breach you can be sued for hundreds of millions of dollars ignite this up at all gouvernement ren puis passeport a pote um 200 mil dollars en bas dernière administration yo bese pour 200 mil gouvernement ça la joine là yo pour ko toucher a sou ça yo joine là yo ni o chai contract that yo entre adan ou puis ça là yo 100 mil dollars pendant temps ces contrats ça là pour qu'on fini pendant temps moun ka espere pour gouvernement faire ça yon pour faire ou pas ça jos di ces moun nan nou ka chore pou ya an lè ou ça ça fait ces moun nan sou nou comme 1 million dollars monsieur speaker comme 100 million dollars we must understand mr speaker investors plan all their investments they borrow money if it is necessary and let us say you sign a contract for 50 million dollars 50 million dollars how on earth mr speaker a month after you have two years of performance the consideration is 50000 two years after you want to tell them we can't take 50 50 million again is 100 million how on earth can you do that but the leader of the opposition wants to hold the government to ransom to break the law and to subject the people of this country to lawsuits which taxpayers would have to foot you know so mr speaker that's what he wants the government to entertain mr speaker but you know in his wisdom the member for Castries East, the Prime Minister, he said, I am willing to sign your joint agreement, your joint agreement. I have no difficulty with joining my colleagues, but please permit me to see that those contractual arrangements to which I am currently bound come to an end. So, Pumye Binisla di Yogosa, when I see a South Lady, we must I join Exxon, but no ni Oshai investors ki a signé agreement no, ek no pasa just dio la ha kai dubli. How can you do that? How can you do that? And the Prime Minister, in his wisdom, for which I applaud him, I must say, Mr. Speaker, he said, "Hold on, I am not subjecting the people of this country." any kind of lawsuit and you'll have to pay that i'm not doing that i'm not doing that and so you will wait until the expiration period is gone and then i could sign whatever you want me to sign bravo to you mr prime minister you see mr speaker that is the kind of madness that the leader of the opposition wants this government to entertain that is what he wants us to do mr speaker he wants us to do the kind of foolishness that obtained in the last government, Mr. Speaker. You understand? That's what he wants. But, you know, the thing is, when you behave like that, and you subject the government and people of this country to lawsuits that may cost you hundreds of millions of dollars, do you honestly put the interests of St. Lucia and St. Lucians first? No, he did not. And he never did with Tio King. He never did. 1,000 acres of land at a dollar an acre when he was prime minister. You think this prime minister would sign anything like that? You see, Mr. Speaker, 
the conspicuous absence of the leader of the opposition tells a lot. It tells a lot, Mr. Speaker. It expresses his unwillingness, if you ask me, to participate in the most important exercise member, for which... Member for Castro Central, I would advise you not to go down that route. The leader of the opposition has written to me, given me a full explanation as to why he's not here. Um, I did not think it necessary to share that explanation with the House, but I would caution you against going down that road. I quite agree, Mr. Speaker, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with any member expressing an opinion. Not when the facts are with the presiding officer. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what, Mr. Speaker. I'll tell you what. At the time the leader of the opposition went to Washington, he was fully aware that the proceedings were slated to have commenced on a given date. He was fully aware. Remember, again, please do not go down that road. The letter from the opposition leader explained all of that. Very well. He was due to come back. Um, what he wasn't sure about was whether he would be able to make the prime minister's speech. But he always intended to be here okay. for the debate. At least so you were told, Mr. Speaker, and I concur. And you, if the presiding officer says so, yes. then it is so. Very well. But, Mr. Speaker, wherever he may have been in some secluded corner in hibernation or seclusion, in wherever he was on the, of the globe, he would have heard the Prime Minister's address. And he would have heard the inevitability of the introduction of a livable, livable wage. He would have heard that government pensioners on the lowest scale will move from $300 to $725, an increase, Mr. Speaker, of over 140%, Mr. Speaker. He would have heard that. He would have heard, Mr. Speaker, that pensioners' pension will now be tied to civil servants' salary. And any increase in one results in a commensurate increase in the other. He would have heard that. He would have heard, Mr. Speaker, that NIC workers will now, from the 1st of August, get a minimum of $500 monthly. NIC pensioners, that is, Mr. Speaker. He would have heard, Mr. Speaker, that $5 million was set aside for income support. And I'm sure he heard. $27 million was set aside to assist farmers. He heard about the rebate for fishermen. He heard about a range of investments, none of which are a pie in the sky like the SH. And I'm sure he heard, Mr. Speaker, that the recently affected banana farmers would receive some kind of assistance at the hands of this generous government, Mr. Speaker. He heard that. I'm sure he also heard that there is a 100% mortgage for civil servants. And yes, he did hear the tax amnesty and elongation of the period, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure he heard that as well, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure he heard as a property owner, at least his father is, that the government has put in place an incentive package for persons with property in the city to enhance the aesthetics, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure you heard that, you know. I'm sure you heard that. So, you know, Mr. Speaker, there were benefits galore. And like the death announcement say, too numerous to mention. They are so numerous that I cannot enumerate them even within the totality of my allotted time, Mr. Speaker. So many benefits, benefits for everyone, from child to adult, Mr. Speaker from red to yellow, from tall to short. Tall to short, I remember that phrase, Mr. Speaker, black to white, for everybody, Mr. Speaker. You see, there is no way any leader of opposition whose interest is the people of this country would have had the audacity to come in this chamber and to say that this budget is nonsensical, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 
what is most phenomenal about this budget is that the benefits bestowed on the people of this country without the imposition of one dollar tax on the people of this country. And I'll say that in part of Mr. Speaker. Mwavle diko sa, tout sa mwe pale about la, tout sa se fa ma, mortgage by civil servant, tap amnesty, incentive by moon pou fe building yo gade bel. And you know, I rather suspect Mr. Speaker, I left out one, there are so many wellness centers being refurbished. I don't know if one will find comfort in making a home there because I rather suspect certain members of the opposition may find refuge in, in, uh, or solace in going to a wellness center, Mr. Speaker, after this budget is implemented. So, Mr. Speaker, all of that, tout ça, gouvernement qu'a fait, gouvernement décidé, Il n'y a pas qu'à mettre un dollar tax, pas même un chlé tax, en l'air. Il n'y a pas qu'à le temps, Mr. Speaker. And yet, absolutely no new taxes. And yet, I heard yesterday the member from Swazel spewing some rumblings, Mr. Speaker. And despite making a concerted, assiduous effort, I cannot seem to make any sensible arrangement of what he was saying, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they were there for five years. For five years. Yo pwe la je penchana. Yo pwe te kabotli. Yo pa bai penchana desu. But today, today, he will say he feel for the pensioners, Mr. Speaker. Huh? Why did you all not address the plight of the pensioners in the more than five years you all were there? Rather than giving them their money, you all lent it to a foreigner. Those are facts that cannot be disputed, Mr. Speaker. You know, you feel for them, you know. There is, there is a, a disease, Mr. Speaker, I don't know if you heard of it. Sahotism. Sahotism, and they suffer from an acute bout of sahotism. And then I'm hearing about the roads in Swazel. You would swear the roads in Swazel started get, getting bad from the night of July 26, 2021. And I heard one long list. And I dare say, Mr. Speaker, the I'm not saying the condition may not have deteriorated slightly. But if you're crying so much for so many roads, it means, therefore, that those roads had already assumed a state of disrepair before this government assumed office. But today you are coming, my road and my road and my road and my road. A vete, a vete, a vete. Somewhat. You know? You know, you cry about you love the creatives. You love the creatives. Mr. Speaker, I went to Swazel and I saw the attache for the member for Swazel selling charcoal, selling produce and other stuff in the craft market. In the craft market. Mr. Speaker. But I must say, persons might not know, I have to leave, Mr. Speaker. We have the um, launching of the junior jazz and I'm supposed to address the gallery. You know, I went to Swazel, a craft center built for the people. I can share produce You know, la place You speak from both corners of your mouth, member from Swazel. On the one hand, Mr. Speaker, and I drew it to his attention right then and then yesterday. On the one hand, he says this government did not complete anything they started. And on the other hand, everything that is good, he's saying it was at the instance of his government. Mais à l'autre side bouche les gars dit tout ça nous fait c'est yo qui met ba place pour nous faire What are you saying 
What are you saying? You know? You know, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, the member from Sozel Saltimus has the audacity to say we have no transparency in relation to St. Jude. I mean, when I heard that, Mr. Speaker, I was asking myself, who's that person talking? And I swear it was a figment of my imagination because I cannot believe what you have put this country through. You have the audacity to speak to transparency. Cannot believe that, Mr. Speaker. Cannot believe it. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if he remembered the time he was in government. If that's the era he was referring to, I would understand. This is the very man, Mr. Speaker, the very man who signed the DSH agreement, later admitted on tape to the media that he did not read it, but he signed. He later admitted it contained clauses that are against St. Lucia. Speaker, point of order. Speaker, point of order. Right on the point of order, Mr. Speaker. The member is misleading this house. I have brought it to his attention on several occasions that what he is referring to about me indicating that I did not know what I signed is a false statement. What I said, Mr. Speaker, at the town hall meeting in June, <coughs> what I was asked about. But did he say you did not know? I yes. never said that. He, he said you did not read. He said, that's what he said, I did not read, I did not read. I but you don't read have that. to read to know. No, but, but he's misleading the house, Mr. No, Speaker. No, what, what exactly is it? You were saying he said the clip. you did not I know. In the house. Yeah. Okay. What he said was you did not read. He did not read. And, and, and that is a false statement, okay. Mr. Speaker. Because what I <clears> said to the audience at the time, Mr. Speaker, and I've invited him to play that, you know, I've invited him to play it on his show, I've invited him to play it in the I house. Right what I said at the time, Mr. Speaker, I was asked a question, Mr. Speaker. The question contained information that I felt I had to be very accurate about. And what I told the audience at the time is, I cannot recall what they were asking me about, Mr. Speaker. I cannot recall reading that in, in, in the agreement. That is exactly my words. My words were, I cannot recall. So I wish for the member to refrain from indicating that I said I did not read. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I shall not refrain because I'm in possession of documentary evidence to substantiate that. I want the member to also say, that he never admitted that there were clauses in the agreement in hindsight which he realized are against St. Lucia. Say you did not say that one too. Mr. Speaker, the member is also misleading the House because in recognizing there were certain clauses that were um, going to hurt St. Lucia, these clauses were removed from the agreement, Mr. Speaker. But, but your point of order... <laughs> No, no, but <laughs> Mayor Vassozel, the point of order does not relate to what he said. The removal. What he said was you said. Yeah, me you were saying it was removed. These are Viewfoot and Grosley. Exactly, Mr. Speaker. Proceed, Mr. Yes, Mr. Speaker. I, I mean, Mr. Speaker, I am one person. If I am not concretely... If I'm not assured, if I cannot say anything with utmost certainty, I re refrain from it. The member said when he realized that he's admitting there are clauses in the, D in the DSH agreement that are against, why did you remove it? You said so, I have the clip, and that will, anyway, Mr. Speaker, I'll deliver that another please. Yes, but you see, and today, Mr. Speaker, you are the very one talking about transparency. You sign an agreement with a clause that was against the interests of this country. By your admission in this August chamber, the clause was removed. You admitted it was removed. Why was it removed? Because it was against our interests. And today, you have the audacity to speak to transparency. A thousand acres of land. Huh? A thousand acres of land, a dollar an acre, selling passports and putting the money in an overseas account to which we, the government and people, have no access? You know? That's screw. You know? Member um, Sozel? Speaker, I believe the member is also misleading the House to indicate about selling passports and putting. I, I'm not sure what he's referring to, if you could clarify. 
<laughs> but if you are not sure, how can you say? You seem to be referring <clears throat> to me. Because you see the member of shows that are selling passports and putting it No, I see, but if you're, if you're not I, I sure... I to clarify because it's misleading. If it's you're misleading not sure house. what he's alluding to, how can you be sure he's misleading? Because he's referring to the member of shows that sell the bus, which is me, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, but you're not sure what he's saying. So I want, the, I want him to clarify this. I'll clarify, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. That's fair enough. The member for Swazel signed an agreement. And within, and the agreement has been made a, a document of the House, the House has it. In that agreement, the government, represented then by himself and the leader of the opposition, agreed to give T.O. King passports to sell the proceeds of which will be kept in a foreign account to which the government and people have no access. See, see who do you pass here, this C'est ça il fait. Je dis à qui parle about transparency. Si yo agreement, ka dit yo king, mi on mi la tête, yo dans la parler, mi passeport vani, pour la rang, mais il autre pays. Mr. Speaker. Member for Sussex. Mr. Speaker, again the member is misleading the house. I wish for the member to bring to this house a document with my signature to show that I agreed for the in the individual is referring to to sell pass because mr speaker there were three other agreements signed after the original agreement that i signed okay so i wish for him to bring that to show that i signed an agreement mr speaker i undertake to make that a document of the house i undertake you see the only reason he kept referring to other documents and other documents and other documents when i came out with the original document bearing his signature they said it was a fake they said it was a fake, but Mr. Speaker, the point still remains. How can you now speak on the altar of transparency when you were engaged in that kind of egregious deed, Mr. Speaker? How can? How can you come and talk about, it's like Mr. Speaker, a criminal having a conviction from here to cast trees, from here to Viewfort, sorry. And then he comes. Remember, you can't get a better analogy. I be, okay, not, not, I'm not referring to the member, you know. Right. Very well. Okay, anybody, Mr. Speaker. It's like somebody who's a renowned prisoner. He has spent three quarters of his life in jail. Now wants to preach to children about, you know, don't commit crime. You know, I'm not saying that people don't change. I'm not saying well, people don't that, change. Isn't that the best person? Well, well probably. Probably. So you mean, you mean then, Mr. Speaker, the hypothesis is the member from Sussex is best place to tell us about transparency. <laughs> Possibly. Possibly, Mr. Speaker. But my point is, let me move on. You cannot, I mean, les sept lissiens, c'est un homme qui a parlé about transparency. Nom salate signé un agreement li ek premier ministre la qui te la. A de agreement, on mil acte dans la pou l'ane. A de agreement, yo di, il sa van pas pour me la ran lot pays. A de agreement, nou pas sa touche la ran. Pas moi qui di, moi ni agreement. Ek den la non bay ba clause. Si le gouvernement n'a pas fait, nous pouvons pou payer pour tout ça. Il fait. Après, c'est nous. I know it was removed. I know it was removed. You know it was. Business because. Well, that's exactly why you signed it and then you did not read it. After you read it, you caused things to be removed. I have no problem with that. Because all of us make mistakes and the corrective action is what you all did. But don't deny it. Don't deny it. You know? and come here and talk about transparency you know i can't believe you and the other thing mr speaker the other thing they have this nice boy thing calling the member from Suzel. how can you be a nice boy and be engaged in those egregious deeds how can you you know how can you be a nice boy and involve remotely or otherwise in dsh how can you how can you have such disregard for due diligence? How can you, you know, an agreement, an agreement, you all won the elections, what was it, June 6? In a couple weeks after, you were signing an agreement selling the soul of St. Lucia. 
You had regard for due diligence, nice boy? No man, no nice boy engages in that kind of conduct that puts St. Lucia at risk. Mr. Speaker, what is even worse? The leader of the opposition, he seemed to be basking in, 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 in glory, relishing the day when T.O.R. King and this government find themselves at loggerhead in a courtroom. He placed us in it, but he, he's, he's rejoicing, Mr. Speaker. And then they turn around and call you nice guy. Another thing he said, Mr. Speaker, yesterday, and uh, you know, people do it rules. I want to say this. I believe everybody said people do it rules. I said it. And I make no apologies for it. But let me contextualize when it was said. During COVID, when people lost their jobs, children cannot go to school. The Monrepo Cemetery was decommissioned in 2016. A constituency that had been, that had been basically favored or, or, or that had its allegiance and loyalty and everything you could possibly think of in terms of association with the United Workers Party. The cemetery was decommissioned in 2016. The United Workers Party was in office and not even the preparatory mechanisms they made to cause a cemetery to be rebuilt. We came in, Mr. Speaker, and with the commitment of the member from Miku North, we acquired land, got the drawings approved, and the cemetery is well on its way. I want us to give him a round of applause. Mr. Well on its way. And we will complete it this year, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it would be remiss of me if I did not address the situation at Castries Constituency Council, and I'm nearing an end, Mr. Speaker. We came into office and found Castries City Council in financial chaos. Judgments galore sitting there unsatisfied and accumulating interest. A number of judgments because of the way they went about doing the things, dismissing persons solely because of political affiliation, not doing anything with legal accord, Mr. Speaker. To date, persons like John Quinlan, persons like Lambert Nelson, persons like Dexter James, and many others have judgments against Castries Constituency Council. We are in Wasco. I inherited a bill of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Lucy Leck, NIC. It's a mess, Mr. Speaker. But thank God, I brought my legal expertise to the fore, Mr. Speaker, on which Castries Constituency Council piggyback for free, gratuitously, Mr. Speaker. We are trying desperately to give Castries City Council a semblance of financial stability, but it's not easy. Why is the last administration put them in a mess? A mess that basically we did not create. They put them in a mess but did not create one new revenue stream. Not one revenue stream for them, Mr. Speaker. Imagine what was happening there, Mr. Speaker. Money was being deducted from the salaries of workers intended to pay creditors like Fix and others, courts. And rather than paying the creditors, Mr. Speaker, they use that money to pay salaries of other workers. And that, that was not the right practice, Mr. Speaker. That was just pushing Castries constituency further into debt. I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that has stopped. And whilst they did not create any new revenue stream, I am working assiduously to ensure that this is done, Mr. Speaker. All they relied on, they were milking the bull, Mr. Speaker, but all they relied on was the little $3 from vendors and government's uh, subvention. To date, Mr. Speaker, we have built many, many booths, many. We have created two parking lots, and in fact, the last set of vending booths will be opened, if not next Friday, the Friday after, and I want all my colleagues to attend. Basically, um, you can come as well to see how well a district rep discharges his duties as parliamentary representative. I'm inviting you, member from Swazil. But I want, you, I want to give you some medication for your scientism. I beg your pardon? <laughs> You're large. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to say something very quickly about the fishers, those guys who sell fish outside the market next to the box park being built, Mr. Speaker. I've charged the mayor with the responsibility of designing and building some facility, whatever it is, does not have to be anything grandiose, Mr. Speaker. But we need to build something somewhere 
for those guys to sell the fish. This is unsightly. It can no longer be tolerated, Mr. Speaker. They have to be removed from there. I don't want to run after them, but they have to be removed. They have to be removed from the box park is there in completion. In fact, Mr. Speaker, a lady met me. One of the persons I had to move, and I told them he will relocate you. And she said to me, Mr. Minister, I see the thing almost complete. When am I? I tell her, our standards should, you know. She said, I don't mind her, but the fish sellers will stay there. I said to her, definitely not. So we are not running after those guys selling the fish. We understand everybody um, needs to earn a living, but obviously it's not compatible with the tourism product that is in that vicinity. The two are totally incompatible. And health reasons as well, Mr. Speaker, as the Minister of Health just told me. So I'm hoping we can go to the fisheries, find a, a location, build some boats very quickly, nicely done, um, not expensive, and give the guys a facility to sell. But what I want to also do is to urge solutions Urge those people who eat fish to go to the fisheries to buy fish. We will leave the guys up there. Once you start to patronize them on the streets, it will make life for us as enforcers difficult. So please, when you want fish, wherever they are located, please go there to avoid what is going on. And the fish again on ice. And we are, as you say that, as, as he said that, as the minister said that, we are also going to be building an ice uh, facility so that they in very close proximity so they can get ice right there to give St. Lucians a good product. Mr. Speaker, there is nothing much I need to say about my constituency. What can I say? Castry Central? Castry Central, Mr. Speaker. There is nothing else Castry Central needs. Castry Central is in good hands. In this financial year, we will see the commencement and completion. I'm hoping, Mr. Speaker, that December 13th, we ought to have an activity at Serenity Park using the amphitheater which will be constructed therein, Mr. Speaker. At that time, there will be a grand opening to rename the park and remove the name George Mallet on that park and return it to Serenity Park, the original name that was given through a competition by a child of a school in the Castries Basin. So people of Castries Central, I want to take this opportunity once again to thank you very much for the opportunity you have given me to represent you in this August chamber. I want to thank all my staff, persons affiliated with me, my peers, the mayor, um, the MD at, at, at um, housing. I want to tell them, you know, sometimes you all may find I humbug you all a little too much, but the political ramifications are always the one who has to shoulder that responsibility. You know, the Prime Minister always says, when a decision is taken, no matter who takes it, they blame me. And in that regard, Mr. Speaker, whether it's as NHC or at housing or at Castry City Council, I have to ensure that I have received the protection I think I deserve as a politician, even if I don't min mingle in the day-to-day -day operations. So sometimes, Mr. Speaker, you know, you call them and you... So I want to tell them, Mr. Speaker, it has been good working with them. I am hoping that I will be working with them for the next 15 years. Um, that may not bring a smile to the face of the member for Susan Saltibus, but I, I do believe that the people of Castry Central they have expressed their faith and confidence in me. I have knocked on the door four times, and on all four occasions, they have opened and let me in. My report card will be presented to them in the not too distant future. When this wise man from the East, the Prime Minister, who is second to none, when he decides that the time is, the time is right, I will present my report card to the people of Castries Central. And I am almost certain, Mr. Speaker, that with a greater mandate, they shall return me to this chamber to continue the work which I have started and by which I will be judged. Having said this, Mr. Speaker, once again, I want to thank the Prime Minister for giving me the opportunity to serve. I want to say overtly that I work in a cabinet of ministers where camaraderie is at the top, out of 100, I would say 101, um, things are done in a collaborative way in the interest of this country. And once we continue along that vein, Mr. Speaker, they shall remain wherever they are, unless our ship calls for every port 
every 17 of the ports when election is called we shall leave no stone unturned with this mr speaker i thank you